Hello, and welcome to the iPad walk-around tutorial. Let's start with a quick overview of some of the physical iPad controls, and then we'll cover the basics of using the iPad. Most of the physical iPad controls are located around the edge of the iPad. There's just a single home button on the bottom of the face of the iPad, and the forward-facing camera at the top. The headphone jack is located on the top left corner of the iPad. It is a standard audio jack that will fit most headphones. If you have an iPad with 3G, 4G connectivity, yours will have a black panel across the top, as well as a small slot on the top left hand side for the SIM card. At the top right is the power button. Press the power button once to put the iPad in sleep mode or to wake it up. To completely power down the iPad, Press and hold the power button down for a few seconds until the slider appears, and then slide it across. You don't need to power down the iPad very often. It has a pretty long battery life and will last up to 10 hours. On the top right hand side are two switches. At the very top is a slide switch, and just below it is a rocker switch. The slide switch is set as a mute switch by default. If you slide it down, you will see the speaker muted symbol appear on the screen. If you switch it back, you'll see the symbol change to show you the volume is back on. Below the slide switch is the volume control, which is a rocker button. Press the top half to increase the volume and the bottom half to decrease the volume. To mute all sound, press and hold the bottom half of the rocker button. The symbol on the screen will change to show you that the volume is muted. Press the top half to increase the sound gradually. At the bottom right is the speaker grill that contains the built-in speaker. At the bottom center is the standard 30-pin connector slot to connect the iPad to a charger or any peripherals. Now that we've looked at the physical iPad controls, we will discuss managing the home screen. When you first turn on the iPad, you will see your home screen. At the top of the screen, you will see the status bar. On the left-hand side, it says iPad. If you have 3G or 4G iPad and were connected to the network, you would see the carrier or provider name in this spot. You would also see a number of bars indicating how strong your 3G or 4G signal is. This iPad is currently on Wi-Fi, so we see iPad and the Wi-Fi symbol next to it. In the middle is the time, and on the right we see how much charge is left on the battery. This is the basic status bar you would see at the top of the screen. If you have other things running, such as Bluetooth or a VPN, you would see those icons in the status bar as well. At the bottom of the home screen is the dock. The dock is meant to house the apps that you will use the most. We suggest moving settings down into the dock, as well as the Stratus Video Interpreting app. To do this, simply tap and hold on any icon. In this video, we are tapping on the FaceTime application as indicated by the yellow dot. After holding for a brief second, you will see the icons start to shake. You can move and rearrange any of the icons while they are shaking. For example, you can put FaceTime in another row, or tap and hold iTunes and move that as well. You can have up to six icons in the dock at any time. To move the settings icon to the dock, simply tap and drag it to the bottom of the screen, let go, and it will attach to the dock. Repeat this step to get the Stratus Video Interpreting icon into the dock as well. Press the home button once again to stop the icons from shaking. Now we'll cover a few different ways to use the home button, as well as multi-touch gestures. You can use the home button in a variety of different ways. For example, if you click on the notes application and then want to get back to the home screen, just tap on the home button to get back. This doesn't mean that you've exited the app completely. It's still running in the background. This is where knowing how to use the multitasking bar comes in handy. The multitasking bar is usually hidden until you bring it up. One way is to double tap the home button and you'll see it appear at the bottom of the screen. In this example, we see the iPad has two running applications, Notes and YouTube. Now, another way to get to this multitasking bar is to use multi-touch gestures. The first one we'll cover is the four finger swipe up. All you need to do is place four fingers on the screen and push up. You will see the multitasking bar appear at the bottom. To come out of the multitasking bar, you can use another four finger swipe down. If multi-touch gestures aren't working for you, you'll need to go into the settings application and make sure they are turned on. Scroll up with a single finger until you see multitasking gestures and make sure it's set to on. Another handy multi-touch gesture is the five finger pinch gesture. 
To do this, simply place five fingers on the screen and pinch inwards to return to the home screen from any application. If you swipe up with four fingers, you'll see the settings application is now in the multitasking bar because it is running in the background. If you're experiencing issues with your iPad, it might be a good idea to close some apps. From the multitasking bar, tap and hold any of the icons until they start shaking. You will see a little red minus sign appear in the corner of the app. If you tap on the minus sign, you will be able to close the app and remove it from the multitasking bar. You can keep doing this with all the open applications to clean up your multitasking bar. Press the home button again to get back to the home screen. That just about covers all the general information you will need to use the iPad. Thanks for using Stratus Video.